Today I want to show with you how to identify the market context and how to trade in the right market context. I'll show you in the charts in detail how that works out, how I do it for myself, what things I look at, what indicators I might use to look at the market context better, what things I look at, especially regarding price structure to look at the market context and make better decisions with the setup I'll apply in the market. We'll dive right in. Right, the first thing I want to point out here is that if you trade a good setup in the wrong market context, things aren't going to work out really well for you. You're going to have a lot of bad trades, a lot of losing trades because you trade in the wrong context. Sometimes an average setup or even a bad setup in the right context can work a lot better than a good setup in the wrong context, right? So we care about the market context first. We care about having the bigger picture view of the market first to determine what we're going to trade. Now, this here is a chart of Bitcoin, as you can see. On the charts, you've got these little blue triangles that are my setups, my Bonjour Universal setups, identified on the charts. Like I see, we have a bunch of them here. And we got one a few days ago, right over here, right? Now, keep in mind, this is a very bullish move on this chart. So if you were to kind of try to catch these trades, try to like get in, get out, we would be in a lot of trouble, right? You can see if we went short over here, that wouldn't go well. If we went short again over here a few days ago, that wouldn't go well. But if you push through, we kind of went strong ahead. And that's the thing that most traders who are new to trading don't understand very well. They don't know that the context matters more than the setup. This is a cool setup. But if you do it in the wrong context, things are not going to work out well for you. Now, if you did go and buy at this setup right there, that would make a lot more sense. See how big the move was after that? Because we're in the right context, you are trending in this kind of market. So this begs the question, how do you kind of look at the context? How do you identify what we're doing? And how do you look at what to trade within the right context? Well, there's obviously a few ways you can do it. The first one is price action only. So some people like to look at charts. They like to look at the highs and the lows. And that helps them to figure out what kind of context we're in. Now do this two time frames above whatever you trade. So if you trade on a one hour chart, go two time frames, so it'll be four hour, then daily. Okay, forget the two hour charts here. That chart is not really applicable. It's one hour, four hour daily. So we look at the context in the daily chart. If you trade the 15 minute chart, you might go 15, 30, one hour for your context. It all depends what kind of time frame you trade. Are you more intraday, are you more swing? Then you kind of adjust from there. I trade a one hour chart and a four hour chart. So I'll go on a daily chart here for my context. And what I can see is, first of all, there's a few ways to do it, right? There's a typical way of using trend lines. Now, trend lines are a good tool, but they kind of can be not too obvious sometimes. Like in a market like this, where it's moving really quickly, trend lines are okay, but they don't really give us a big context, right? So what I like to look at first, in terms of price action only, is I like to look at the highs and the lows. Now, if you're good, you can do this by hand, just looking at the charts. If you need some help a little bit, uh, go here in the indicator window and search for the indicator that's called pivot point high low actually. This one over here. Add this to your chart, and this will show you the highs and the lows on the market. Now, I might want to refine this a little bit. 10, 10 is all right. If you want to go a bit more kind of longer term, you could do 21, 21, and here 21, 21 again. So this will give us a good idea of whether price makes lows and highs, and whether we're trending or not. If we see price making the same highs, like over here and over here, well, we're not trending. If you see price making the same lows, we're not trending either. But if you see price making higher highs and higher lows, or lower lows and lower highs, then we're kind of trending. So pay attention to these highs and lows, right? Over here, we have a low. We have a high here. Now we come back, make a low here. And we make our other low here. Then our high is still here, right? So from here to here, we're trending. From there, we're still trending. From here, we're no longer trending in this market. Now, you kind of got to filter this out a little bit for yourself. You have to look at the big picture. So we have another low over here. We come back at the same low, and our high is staying constant here in that case. Now, when we break that high, we can say we're trending. So all kind of reversal setup shouldn't be applied here. This should be only trending setups in that case. We should only buy with the trend. And it just makes sense because we have a breakout of a certain range. We kind of go up from there. We want to be careful not to look for any kind of engulfing candle against the trend are useless here. The R side being overbought is useless here also because we're going to be overbought for a long time. We're going to be trending, especially on Bitcoin, where price is going to go really high, really quick. We're going to be trending for a while in this case. So we don't want to apply any kind of reversion to the mean, any kind of even bong ban don't work in this market condition. Now they work for trending setups. They work if you want to buy with the trend, but they don't work if you want to go and short against the trend. Now in the same way we do it, in trending market. What about when we're somewhere around here? So people say it's boring, we'll just go back and forth, no trend. Well, we can make a lot of money in this kind of context. And the way this works is you trade reversals, but you don't wanna like buy a 
head and shoulder pattern over here. Like you don't want to do that. You don't want to you don't want to go and buy something over here. So we look at these extreme points, the highs and lows for our sit-ups. Near the high, it's a good place to look for sales, reversals. Near the low, it's a good place to look for bullish trades. Again, reversals. So somewhere around here, great place to look for a reversal. Somewhere around here, well, we don't know yet, but we kind of test this path structure here. So a good place to look for, again, a reversal setup in this market. So we got to be careful not to kind of go and buy and sell too much in the middle of the range, because I really believe we have no edge there. I really believe if we go back and forth, this is somewhere where we kind of could we could do it, but we don't really have a strong edge. At the top of the bottom, we have a really good edge in this market. But then again, we don't want to look and kind of buy a trend if we're going to be somewhere over here. We could buy a trend around here. We could buy a trend somewhere in the middle, but we don't want we don't want to go and buy on the trend if we're at the top. Okay, that just makes sense. Some people will go and look at this on lower time frames. They'll say, oh, wow, we have a big trending market. See, if you look at this on like a one hour chart, wow, man, this thing is going through the roof. We're going from here all the way to the top here. This is amazing. I'm going to buy. And then they go and buy. But see how the market didn't go anywhere from there. We kind of just go here and then reverse back again. Right? So be careful. You got to be treating this as the right condition. You got to be looking at the right market context first and then deciding if you want to buy or sell. And that goes on the bigger time frame. This is not to say we cannot make money on these small moves here toward the top of a range and then we buy. We could do it, but we've got to be very careful with our take profits. This is a place to target a one-to-one, -one, a very quick bounce trade perhaps, but don't go and look for like these five-to-ones, these like six-to-ones, because you're like at the top of a range. Like th that should be very clear. When you're at the bottom though, and you have a chance to catch a good reversal, or even at the top and you want to sell, then that could be a place to look for a much bigger target. See how if we went to short here, we got a lot of room for our trade to go, right? Once we kind of pass these bounces and tests of the range, price will start to go down quite aggressively. And that's where we can have these bigger targets. Now, back on the daily chart here, what if you are not good with price action? You want to, you kind of like the idea of looking at the market context, but to you, price action doesn't really make sense. It's hard to figure out if you were trending or not, like if you're sideways, especially here on the Japanese yen, it's kind of, kind of confusing that we have these lows here. We've kind of went in uptrend. Then we kind of start to slow down. We're not sure if we're going to stop trending or not. We're kind of in between, right? It's kind of like sideways now. We want to be sure we want to have a clear way to make money on like maybe the shorter trends. And we want to be able to get out when it's not trending anymore, right? So this is where indicators comes in. And the way indicators are good is because they give you a very clear cut, objective view of the market. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to guess. You don't have to look at the market yourself. Just look at the indicator. It gives you clear data on what you should do in the market. And of course, it's going to work sometimes, not work other times. We know this for sure. But at least we have a good way to look at it and we don't have to think or analyze and like second guess yourself. We have a clear picture of the market. Now, you could use these moving averages. I'm probably looking especially at a exponential moving average. And the way I use moving average with the trends is I don't look at them as are we above or below? I look at the slope of the moving average. And I might go this and I might put this on a 21. Or maybe actually a 14, but I really want to add this on even a bigger time frame, right? Because if we do 14 here, it's going to look all right, but it's going to be very tight. It's going to be very hard to look at this moving average and study for trading or not. It's going to be very close to the price. If we put this on a higher time frame, trading view allows us to do this very well. If you we go here at the bottom, it says multi time frame, we can have a look at this on a weekly chart. Now, 14 weeks, that's pretty good, right? That gives us a good idea of. Are we trending or sideways? So when it's sloping up, you can see it's going up over here. Then we're in the buying mode. Then we look for trending setups. When it's somewhere sideways, or we, we see we're just jumping around, then we look for these reversals, right? And we still want to look at our range too for this kind of context. I'll give you an example in just a minute here. If you are going down, like here we start to go down, then you want to look for these bearish trades and not bullish setup anymore. Okay, see how this works quite well with the price. Now we can also use our moving average as an area for bounce trades. So when you touch the moving average, this could be a good place to look for buy trade, right? And when we, and the opposite is true when we start to sell. And the opposite is also true when you start to go down. But we gotta be careful because sometimes the price will just kind of chop around, go back and forth between the moving average, like up and down, up and down. Here we have no edge in this kind of condition, right? We've got to be very careful here. We better look at the slope 
of the moving average, are we going down or up, to give us a good idea of the trend. This works all right, but the one indicator I like even more than this one is called the whole moving average. So it's H-U-L-L, and you got some free ones here on TradeView you can use by yourself if you want. These work really well. The whole moving average, you can look at the formula if you want to, if you do care about this stuff. It's giving you a much closer look at the price. And you see, if I add this here on the weekly chart, the 14 period again, we have a much smoother curve, so we can decide much faster if we're trending or not in this kind of market. And that gives us a pretty good view of are we trending or are we sideways in the market. Now, the way I like to use it here is a little bit different because the fact that we can, of course, use this like I showed you before with the moving average as if we're going down, the slope is down, then we, therefore we want to sell. We can do that. If you're going up, we want to buy. But there's a better way to look at it. And that's with are we above or below the whole moving average, right? If price is below the whole moving average, and we have an uptrend, then we have a good place to buy because we're lower than the value we, sh we should be. So we're kind of like, we're not overbought. We're actually in a good spot to look for buy trades. So an example of this would be somewhere around here. See how we touch below, then we bounce right back above, right? And we are going up with the home moving average. So a good place to look for a buy trade. Somewhere around here again, we we'll go up, we bounce here, good place to look for a bullish trade. And then we can ride the trend. Once we get here again, now this is the opposite. We go down and we bounce above. So we're on a good area, a good value spot to look for a sell trade here. Okay, same thing here, same thing there. And then we kind of go and start this again. Same thing over here, same thing over here. See how this gives us some good areas to look for bullish trades. Again, I'm using this on a bigger time frame, and that makes things a lot easier. I've actually been able to develop my own version here that's kind of color coded. So what this one does is simply give you the same thing, but color coded. So you can see when it's red, we're going down, therefore we want to look for these bearish trades above, ideally. Here we had no areas to look for sell. But when we're going up, we have the green color and we want to look for bullish trades below that whole moving average. So this gives us a better idea of like what we're going for. Now, if we're going to go back and forth and back and forth, ideally we want to trade this like only when you have a trend. Like if we are going somewhere here, we see a ranging market. We don't want to trade that kind of setup. Same thing here. We're bullish all the way. But see how we go up and down, up and down, up and down. We could still make a little bit of money here. And the help moving average is quick enough to help us to figure out that when we reach near the top, it's probably going to turn red again. And then we can kind of start to get out of our trades that way. And a good thing about this is you are able to trade bulk conditions. Example here is we're kind of going very choppy on this market. But if we just look to sell above when it's red, we can go and take some short trades here. Right now, when it's over here, we don't want to do anything because we're kind of oversold, if you can call it that way. When you come back here, we can again sell. We sell, we sell, we sell. Now, gotta be careful when it's turning back green. We don't want to sell anymore. We want to be maybe buy if it's below, which it didn't go below. Here we are, here we are having maybe a few losing trades because we are red, but kind of go above, turn to be green. Then we kind of continue that way. We can sell around here, we can sell around here. So we can still take a few trades, even though we are kind of sideways. We're still trading a little bit, but we're mostly sideways in this market. Same thing here, except we go back and forth. And that would be the kind of condition where I want to avoid when we're going back very quickly from green to red to green to red. I will try to avoid this kind of condition. All right, so you can see how long we are in a specific color and how long we last, how long we go up, how long we go down. Now, if you use just a normal whole moving average, both ways work, then you can kind of decide and adjust from there. So the point here is not to sell you on any kind of indicator. Again, you can do this very easily with price action only or with a simple whole moving average that's free on TradingView. Both ways work. I'm showing you here ways to do it by yourself. As always, my goal is to teach you to become an independent trader, to be able to do things on your own term, to be able to adapt to the market, and that makes a big difference. And if you want to learn more about technical analysis, check out this playlist over here next. I want to hear your thoughts below in the comment section. A lot of good videos here about how to look at the market better, how to analyze the market, and some things you can do to become a better trader, better at chart reading. And I'll catch you back here in the next video pretty soon.